Hello everyone, my name is Jason. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about try catch. Try catch in JavaScript kind of sucks. A lot of people have complained about it. Today I want to explore why try catch is frustrating, talk about a common solution that many has proposed, and a pattern that I haven't seen enough people talk about. So let's dive in. To illustrate why try catch might be frustrating for some developers, I prepared this little function. In this get user and preference function, we call into get user and pass it on to get user preference and return both in a tuple. Let's say get user or get user preference might fail sometime. To handle the errors, we typically would wrap the whole thing within the try block and catch all the errors from the block. We will be handling the error here. In this case, we will just return now. This brings us to the first problem in try catch. It catches all errors within the try block. So in this example, error here can come from get user or get user preference, or even if we mistyped a variable, they will all come through to the catch block. In this super simple function, it might not seem like a problem, but as the function grows, let's say we have another hundred lines of code here, it becomes harder and harder to figure out where the error comes from. To fix this, what we really want is to catch errors at every operation in the function instead of catching errors from the whole function. To do that, we can simply wrap every operation, in this example, get user and get user preference, in two different try blocks. But as you can see, we got some errors now. TypeScript is complaining that user and user preference are not found. The reason for this is that the block in try block is a block. So any block scoped variable defined within it is only available within that block. So in this example, user and user preference are only available within their own try block. The most common way to fix this is to move these variables up a level and reassign them within the try block. This way user and user preference will be available within the function. The problem with that though, as you can see, there's a error here. It's a linting error. It says that user preference and user has type implicit any. We didn't have this problem before because we were declaring the variable and assigning to it at the same time. TypeScript's type inference, we're able to figure out what the type user and user preference should be. But in this case, we're first declaring user and then reassigning it. TypeScript couldn't figure out at this line what the type of user should be. So it just implicitly type it as any. To fix that, we can explicitly define the type for these variables. So the two drawbacks with this pattern is that, firstly, we compromise the integrity of our code now user and user preference are defined with let. So somewhere down the line within this function might actually reassign user and user preference to something else. This can lead to unintended behavior very easily, especially in larger code bases. Secondly, we were forced to use explicit typing. Let's say I replace the function signature of get user preference to return a promise of number. Then immediately we get an error where previously with type inference, TypeScript will be able to figure out the type itself without me needing to change this to number as well. This can be good or bad depending on the situation, but generally I do prefer type inference most of the time. So this is a brief outline of why try catch might be frustrating for developers. To summarize, try block catches everything. When we try to wrap things into smaller individual operations, it sort of forced us to compromise on some integrity of the code and some convenience provided by TypeScript. To improve the situation, many developers have come up with different ideas, but in general, they can be summarized as do not throw. The idea is to have your function always return both the result of the function and the error of the function, if there's any of either. So here's a very simple implementation of the do not throw idea. 
And as you can see here, we have a try catch function that takes in the promise. All it does is to unwrap the promise. If there's any error, return it in the first element in the tuple. If there's no error, return now as the error and return the result in the second element. That's all it does. With this simple function, we were able to retrieve the error without doing any try catching. This pattern eliminates all the downsides from what we've discussed previously. We were able to cache individual errors from each operations while keeping the integrity of our variables and the convenience of type inference. This solution works really well, and I think you should really use it if the team agrees. But I can still see a few downsides of this. Firstly, to have errors returned from a function call instead of throwing, I will argue that it's not a very idiomatic way of doing JavaScript. Secondly, it requires a utility function, and that utility function isn't really standardized anywhere. You can easily find a dozens of implementations on NPM, and they all have slightly different APIs. So this brings us to the last topic of the video, a new pattern that I haven't seen enough people talk about. Okay, I, I say new, but um, it's actually very old, uh, as old as JavaScript. It is Eevee, not this Eevee. <laughs> what I mean is immediately invoked function expression, Eevee. The idea here is really simple. All we need to do is wrap the operation that we want to catch errors from in a function. And now all we need to do is immediately invoke it. And this function will be called and user will get assigned to whatever this function returns. So we need to return this await get user. And because it is a async function, so we need to add await. And to handle any error from get user, all we need to do is to reach out to our old friend, try catch. In the case of error, we'll return now here. So user becomes user or now, because we return now here if there's any error. And in here, we can just very simply say, if user is now, then return now. And we can do the same for get user preference. And just like this, we have solved the case of try catch with native JavaScript. Isn't that great? Without any utility function, discussion with the team, arguing with your team, convention agreement with the team, arguments with the world, sacrifice the integrity of the code, sacrifice the convenience of type inference, just plain native JavaScript. Isn't that great? I do really like this idea. I feel like the way how the error handling is kept within the EV keeps the function overall quite clean. Once the if we finishes, you can sort of forget about it and only care about whatever is returned from your function. So I feel like this pattern is more encapsulated and I really do enjoy working with this pattern. To summarize, we've talked about why try catch might be frustrating for developers, you know, the try block catching everything and how it forces you to use let instead of cons and sacrifice on type inference. Um, and we talked about the utility function try catch, which has been talked about a lot recently. And thirdly, an alternative solution with a very, very old ancient pattern in JavaScript. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you have any questions or any ideas, please feel free to comment and let me know. I would love to hear your ideas. Um, Oh, actually, there's one more thing I want to talk to you about. Um, I want to tell you about this do expression proposal. So it is currently at stage one. And what it does is basically Eevee, more or less. And if we scroll down on this proposal all the way down, we'll see a try catch example uh, with do expression. I can totally see when this 
do expression finally ships, the try catch discussion would just go away because this is obviously the best way to handle errors once this is out. So if you use try catch if you today, you would be able to migrate to do expression seamlessly when it finally comes out. And when it comes out, this video would be a proof of how good I am. Yeah, let's go. All right. Bye. Catch you guys.